Hello, hello, hello. Season 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race. It's me, RuPaul, and I am joined here by my confidant, Michelle Visage. Hello, I am <laughs> Michelle Visage, and I am uh, a drag queen. You're a woman. Oh, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here to uh, judge the drag queens on uh, their, uh, you know, how they hold themselves up. On their beautiful body. Yeah. How they speak, are they eloquent, and also on their views on human rights. Mm. Of course, race. we are lying. This is the Potter Vision Podcast, episode 108, Detention with Dolores, book five, chapter 13. That's Spanish for 13. I'm joined today by Lucas Kirkby. He is today's uh, guest. Hello. Um, I'm in his childhood home. This was his bedroom. Uh, look around, hundreds of CDs, mate, nee, thousands uh pet shop boys mostly and yeah. uh others loads of yes alphabetized cds and i used to sleep between d and f uh but yeah now i was in the other room down there where you've been sleeping in your spider-man bedding mm. Mm. has it been comfy nice comfy bed it's not better than nothing better than nothing there we go you can't ask for more than that can you yeah Last podcast, uh, we were in Glasgow, Amy's house. Yeah, about three weeks ago. And we told ourselves we'd do loads of pods to get ahead of the game. Uh, but we're doing this with two days <laughs> to go before it has to be released. Unfortunately, it is very hard to record podcasts as well as do a tour. Mm. I'm driving all day. 10 hours a day sometimes yeah. to do a gig in Denby for 12 people. Um, well, it's up to 27 now, and who knows, in a couple of hours' time, that might be 29. Mm. 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 Me, on the other hand, I've got lots of Sudokus to be getting through. I've got to keep on top of them. They keep adding them to the app more and more. Mm. He loves his Candy Crush saga. I do not play Candy Crush Saga. Well, I used to, but I've not played that for about five years. It's been an interesting tour, because I'll drive along the motorway, and next to me I've got Lucas with his two iPads overstimulating himself. One will be on, like, Candy Crush Saga, the other one will be on Bear in the Big Blue House music, and he just, like, flicks between them both. He's mad. I've not got an iPad with me on the tour. I've got one phone. I try and talk to him. I go, how are you doing, buddy? And he goes, me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well sometimes we talk sometimes we squawk. don't talk sometimes we squawk I've been enjoying Tom's 20 favourite songs on loop that he likes to put on shuffle uh, two of them are the same song how, do you, how would you know people. that oh different people you're at that he, he has two versions of As It Was by Harry Styles one is by Harry Styles the other is by someone who performs the song as if it's being performed by The Strokes, which, well, I really like that. It's fantastic. To be fair, the 20 songs are a very eclectic mix. You know, you've got a big mix of genres, mixture of artists, good songs. There's just not enough of them. There needs to be a few more to mix it all up. We have got a lot, a lot, a lot to update you all with. We have done 22 effing part of vision dates. Yes. And a lot, lot has happened. I don't, we're not going to cover it all today. Cover thump some things today. Uh, what's been burning in my mind, listeners won't know this about me, but for the first time in my life, I have been ill. You've been very poorly the past week. I caught something called the necrovirus. Um, can he's guessing. He's not been officially diagnosed with anything. He's just had some symptoms that he's looked up on the internet. But he's got necro... Uh, what's it called? Virus. Necrovirus. It can kill you if you're not strong enough. Bloody hell, with a name like necrovirus, you mm. think it'd be deadly. So let me tell you this. We do gig in London, right? We're driving 
to Brighton afterwards, two hours. And I say to Lucas, my tummy is not right. I have never felt this way before. I feel unusual. I think I may be sick. This is a feeling in my body. I may have an alien growing inside me. He looks up from his iPad. He goes, well, I feel fine, so I don't care. We carry on driving to McDonald's. That's very sympathetic. I don't, I don't think you were. I was. I went, oh. I must have said that. Mm, that's because you just lost on Temple Run. Oh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I just hit a pipe in Flappy Bird. We uh, get to McDonald's, um, charge our phones, eat some food, drive to Brighton. We get to the hotel in Brighton and we've booked one that doesn't have parking. So there's a whole catastrophe with parking. I come off, I come back for a bit with like, with the car when I was meant to go park. I start kicking the hotel doors. <laughs> The guy was getting very nervous. <laughs> you were in a bad mood. And then as soon as the the doors didn't open within five seconds, he starts trying to prize them open like I didn't, Freddy Krueger. I didn't try and prize them open. You so, did? You went like that? So I pull up outside this hotel because I need Lucas because he's given me his phone to get into the parking, but his phone is locked and out of the passcode. So I'm outside the hotel beeping my horn. Lucas is just staring at me like this. And beep my horn, and he's like, "What?" And I'm like, "What do no, you think?" What it I'm was? Like, beep, 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 and he's like, "Don't know what that is." What it was? The man was in the middle of issuing me the the room key, so I was like, "I can't just go outside while he's about to give me the key to the room." Why not? Back in a moment, he looks like he needs something, or well, I'm sure he can wait half a minute outside. So I get out of the car, lock it, hazards on. I go into the thingy, but but travel lodge uh, doors don't open at night automatically in case people you know messing about. Mm. So I go into the first set of doors and the second lot. Lucas and his new best friend are just staring at me like this. Neither of them opening the doors. <laughs> like like, what could he possibly want like that? Yeah. And I go, say I might have said something like, "Open the fucking door." I'm with him, and I I give the uh, doors a bit of a tap with my foot. Like, come on. He goes like that. I don't do that. Them. You did, because they opened a bit and then snapped back shut. <laughs> and then he was like, we've only just had them fixed. Kicked him a bit. Got a bit annoyed. Um, and then I go, you need to give me the QR code, pal, so I can get into the parking. So I get that. Go to the parking. Doesn't work. I'm really ill and I'm really tired. That day, I'd driven from Manchester, drove to London, did a gig. Went and did another gig, drove to Brighton, had McDonald's, I'm feeling ill. I've not slept. Go up to the room, go to bed. Lucas snores like a monster for nine hours. Yeah, well, I won't argue with that one. Uh, <laughs> well, I had a bit of a cold, so I had like a blocked <clears throat> nose, uh, which I think made me my breathing a bit laboured, which made me more snorey. Without exaggeration, I lay there with my eyes open the whole night. At 5am, I woke up and I vomited into the toilet. <laughs> Everything I'd had for tea. Yeah. I have not vomited since I was a child. Yeah. And if you don't mind me saying, uh, that, that did wake me up and it annoyed me a bit. Uh, <laughs> I was woken from my snorry slumbers by a vomiting friend. At 9am... I say to him, that's enough sleep for you now. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll wake Slapping him up. Slapping me awake like that. Uh, uh, uh. And he sends me away. And he goes, I'll sleep now. You no, no, go no, no, away. no, no, no. What? We think, right, should we try and go have some breakfast? So we go downstairs at half nine. Oh, I forgot about this. To try and get some travel lodge breakfast. Yeah. And um, we look around. <laughs> And there's no, the, all the food is out there. There's no one in the cafe. It's like all out there steaming, waiting to be taken. Mm. Looking at it all, our tummies are rumbling. Well, we can't, what we think, we can't start eating it without permission. So we're looking for a member of staff to try and like pay for the breakfast first. 
Minutes go by, tens of minutes, fifteens of minutes go by. We go to reception, we try and get some. We go, oh, how can we have breakfast? They go, oh, go into the area, some will come out. Someone eventually came out. We go, please, can we pay for two breakfasts? Woman goes, what time is it? I go, it's 10 a.m., dear. She goes, closed, closed. <laughs> I go, sorry, love. What's this? She goes, breakfast is closed at 10. I'm the only one on. And I'm like, so we can't have any? She goes, no. I go, hmm. I say, all this food then, will you throw it in the bin? She goes, what? I go, this food. Yeah. Will you throw it in the bin? She goes, yeah, I will. I was like, great. We leave. Um, was any of that an exaggeration? The voice. <laughs> The voice was a little bit, but uh, the words were, were quite accurate, actually. <laughs> the voice. <laughs> no, no, I don't enough. quite remember her being quite, wow. She was. Wow. It was pain in her, me asking her questions. Yeah, she didn't like it. She wanted to go home. I'm the only one on. Well, you've not got any work to do because there's no customers in this effing restaurant. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, she didn't have to do, like, just let us have a plate. There's a buffet. It's all there ready. It's going to go to waste. Let's have a couple of hash browns and bacon rashers. I know. So we went next door to Weatherspoons. We both got eggs benedict. I only ate half. I ate whole. I went went back up to the hotel room. He went to like a CD snooker club where he sat on a man's lap all afternoon. I don't know what you did in there. <laughs> no, I went to the la- oh, lovely library in Brighton. Ooh. He came back smelling of strange aftershave. I don't know what that was. Musty. Yeah, well, what happens in Brighton stays in Brighton. <laughs> anyway, I drifted in and out of consciousness for hours, like because yeah. <laughs> this bug I had. <laughs> I say, Lucas, pal, I'm not in the right state. Is it all right if I don't do the show tonight? He goes, he starts laughing manically. He goes, not a chance. Them tickets have been paid for. This conversation never happened. Marches me out on stage. I go, surely you won't want me to spit a jelly bean into your mouth. He says, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> yeah, I've been uninfected. I've had a bit of a cold, but I've not had anything that you've had. Mm. I've not had bad tummy. No. I've not had bad bummy. Well, I've not had bad bummy. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> let me tell you something. Yeah, yeah what would you like I, to tell I've not me? been right. I've been shivering. I've not been able to finish meals. I've not been myself. I look oh, in the mirror and I, I don't... I think you've been more of yourself. How do you mean, brother? Irritable, impatient, tired. You've just been Tom Plus. We had a journey to drive. Swansea to Glandudno. Yeah. After the gig, which is a a mad journey because there is no motorway that goes through Wales. No, they've decided to leave the mountains and the countryside as an area of outstanding natural beauty. I think they should um, uh, blow all it up, blow it all up with dynamite, and put a motorway in there for their yeah, own good. I do. You'd be able to do it in two hours if you had a motorway through Wales. You'd get it done in two hours. It's about four and a half without. It's long and it's windy and it's hilly. My stomach, I became in agony. My torso, my thorax, it was, Mm. I've never, it was like akin to childbirth contractions. Yeah, well, you'd know what they would be. I was, wouldn't you? I have got a very high pain tolerance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People stand on my feet all the time. They stamp on my toes and they yeah. twist their feet. They like poke me in the eyes like that. Yeah, yeah. And normally I say nothing. Yeah, I just that's just the life. It's a hand that I've been dealt. Yeah, but this pain. I was writhing around. You had to drive. I was in the passenger seat and I was wailing, wailing like a sick dog. Yeah, it was very distressing for me actually. It was distressing for you. You did not understand it whatsoever. <laughs> Every 10 minutes, in pain, I would do an expletive. I'd be like, fuck, like that, because I was in so much pain. And every 10 minutes, he'd follow that up with, what's wrong? And I'd say, <laughs> what do you fucking think? Yeah, and uh, it's very scary for me. I hope when people listen to Tom's stories, they do see through the spin that he puts on them. 
and understands my point of view. Uh, I'm concerned for Tom's welfare. And every time I went, oh my God, I was like, oh, what's that? Well, it's got worse. I was like, oh. Well, you know, you like to be sympathetic, don't you? Four hours this went on for. Yeah. Four what hours. What would you rather? Would you like to pat you on the head and say, there, there? Just be quiet. Just be quiet. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and unfortunately, he was driving a car. It was like his first driving lesson. Yeah. He was trying to start the car in six gear. I don't think that car's ever been stalled as much in its life. Well, when you haven't, done, you know, driven a car like that, it's, it was a... Bloody bigger engine than I'm used to. I'm used to little 1.2s. You've got a 2.0. Mm. Gets hey, going when you put your foot down. You got a bit confused. You were like, oh, the car's a bit dirty. I'm in the passenger seat at a petrol station. I notice he's like pouring diesel over the windows and stuff. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> there was diesel on the outside of the car when I looked. No, no. It's just when I pulled out the nozzle, a couple of little droplets, little globules of diesel went on the bit where mm. the diesel goes. Absolutely. Oh, And that is just one story. Yeah. Bloody long one. Uh, but yeah, that was just one story. I'm sure there'll be many more. Uh, unearthed as we as we continue. What have you got to talk about? Well, I don't know where to insert this piece of bad news. Fucking Should it go at the end or now? What is it? You quitting part of vision? No, no, it's the bad news you know about. Well, just to let people <laughs> know. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll know, tell them. You? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case people are wondering why I don't mention her anymore, uh, Poppy passed away. She was very poorly for a few weeks. We think she had Cushing's disease, which sounds nice. You know, a cushion. Uh, but it was Cushing with a G. And she was very poorly, started losing her fur. And, uh, yeah, she passed away about a week later. Not very well. How old was Poppy? She was two, which I think is about the average lifespan of a hamster. Very sad. Yeah. So that's just for people to know. Uh, if anyone wants to send cards and flowers, you are mental. So don't do that. Uh, but yeah, just so you know, in case uh, you wonder why I'm not giving you updates on her. No more updates to give. No. R.I.P. But Connie is alive and well. She's recently started a new admin job. Has um, she? Yes. For who? Who's she admin for? Uh, Arnold Clark. Oh, what is that? That's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Is that a jeweller's or something? No, it's a uh, car showroom. I think, I think they specialise in Ford cars mostly. Yeah. Uh, but she's enjoying being in the showroom. Um, it's quite a laddy atmosphere because a lot mm. of the salesmen are men. Yeah. Um, but so it can get a bit rowdy. But she can hold her own. But I've said, you know, if she needs anyone to go in. Uh, another word. I would do it, but I would not like to. So stand up for yourself first, Connie. And then uh, after that, maybe I will go go in. But I'd have to work myself up to a state before I go in there. Because yeah. uh, I can't just turn the anger on. I'm a naturally placid person. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, I don't want Connie to become the victim of, you know, workplace misogyny, of all things. Mm. So... But it's, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Because obviously, you know, you want her to be independent, stand up for herself. But there's a lot of annoying blokes. Maybe she needs backup. Yeah, all right. Um, well, all the new, all the updates you got? Uh, mostly, mostly, mostly about the tour. Uh, we had a lovely time in Belfast. Uh, where Belfast, we... land of the Irish. Land of the Northern Irish. Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. We were just doing impressions of a Northern Irish accent out and about on the street. Uh, I think people must have thought we were nuts. It's very annoying to locals. Very annoying. Hello to our new Irish listeners. Hello! <laughs> uh, but we arrived at the airport and uh, we picked up the suitcase. We hadn't actually had a plan, did we? We got to the airport and we are like, oh, let's sit down for a coffee then. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Oh, before that, you yeah. picked up the suitcase. Go on. There's a little doggy, a little black cocker spaniel, <laughs> sniffing everyone's bags. And the lady goes, uh, oh, you don't mind if uh, my wee little doggy runs over your suitcase, does he? 
And Can my uh, wee doggy run over your suitcase, uh, stand on your backpack? So I, uh, I put my backpack on the floor. A dog did not stiff it. It just stood on it and walked <laughs> off. And I, walked off. Can my wee doggy stand on your back? But we were worried, weren't we? Because the part of vision suitcase <laughs> is a Gary Glitter suitcase. They are, they are hard to di- differentiate. When Gary Glitter was stopped in Do Vietnam... You mind? Well, I'm not allowed to masturbate live on pod. No. <laughs> um, when Gary Glitter was stopped in like Vietnam, they opened up his suitcase and it was filled with like little costumes, wiggies, dollies, which is very much at Sweeties, which is very much like the part of vision suitcase, is it not? It is, 100%. When did that happen with Gary Glitter? I don't know. You want to be in my gang? I've not done that for a bit, have I? No, I'm glad of it. Do it tonight. Yeah. Uh, well, imagine that, just finishing a war and then Gary Glitter turns up with dollies in his suitcase. Oh, this happened in, like, the 2000s. Mm, something like that. No, not something like that. Oh, that. Oh, that. But let oh. me tell you, because in the 80s and stuff and 70s, he would have been doing it in the UK. Yes. But there is one... Major difference between Potter Vision and Gary Glitter. Yes. Do you know what it is? Yeah, there's two of us. No, 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 no. One no. of it. What? Gary Glitter <laughs> is a paedophile. Oh, right. We yeah. are not. No. Do it no. with me. Yeah, we are not. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah, we were worried about that. And then on when we picked up the suitcase from the, the travelator on the way back. We were like, well, you know, you should always check inside the suitcase to make sure it's yours. You don't want to be going home with somebody else's suitcase. Well, but when we saw the party popper remnants in the wheel and the ginger hair sticking out of the zip, we were pretty sure it was the pot of vision suitcase. You still wanted to check. I did want to check. Well, because I've, I've lost my bag. I don't, people have not learnt this on the main pod I left my suitcase on a train and I've mm. not managed to get it back so I'm a bit paranoid about suitcases now so I wanted to double triple check the uh, pot vision one mm. oh just double check there might be another one with party mm. poppers and ginger hair in it but it was ours it was ours yeah. Belfast was nice we arrived we went to the Cinematac we saw Ant-Man we enjoyed it a bit. It was good. You ate a uh, a kilogram of popcorn. A kg <laughs> of PC. Yeah. It was lovely. Um, yeah, and then we saw Puss in Boots more recently as well. That was good. I prefer that to Ant Man. Well, I've seen that twice now. Puss in Boots. He's seen it twice. Um, P in B, the L W. What did we do after that? Oh, we had a Burger King. That was crap. Crap Burger King. Uh, we went to the hotel to try and sleep. Yeah. Got I got half an hour, you got three hours. An hour and a half, but yeah. Went to the performance. Went to the gig. Yeah. Did the performance. It was very nice. Afterwards, we went and tried to eat the world's largest pizza again. Failed again. Failed again. <laughs> <laughs> but it financially makes sense to get one big pizza between us um and then we what did we do went to sleep woke up for the airport got to the airport flew back to manchester went to sleep and that that was it and now we're in wales then we've got the last day of the tour tonight mm. we're in denby for our smallest audience of the tour so finishing on a bang what a way to go out <laughs> Who would have thought we wouldn't draw a crowd in Denby? I remember when we first went to Denby last year. Yeah. And I remember saying to you, "What? what's, De- what's Denby? What's, what is that? And you said, it's a place. Mm. And go, right, it's a place. Where? It's in Wales. Yeah. Right. That's about it, really, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But the theatre's nice. And we had a nice time last year. But, mm. uh, yeah, not many people have bought tickets this time. Oh, well. But who knows? We might get 70 walk-ups. Now, Tom, are you ready for a Chapter 13, Book 5 rundown? 
Should old acquaintance be forgotten, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on heaven as in earth. Oh, it's nice to do the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> it's the tune of old Lang Syne. <laughs> right before the rundown, isn't it? It's lovely. We should do it every time. Yes, we will do now. Thank you, Lucas. Good idea. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, me, that'll get me excited for the rundown. Rundown, please. <laughs> Detention with Dolores. Harry, Ron and Hermione are doing all these lessons and the work's piling up. Homework, practicals, exams. They have to draw a picture of an animal. And then Harry has got his detention with Professor Umbridge. And it's not nice. She makes him self-harm. He's writing lines and they're scratching on his own hand in blood. Mm. On the first day, it's just a bit of, bit of a scratch. On the second day, it's a bit of a scratch. On the third day, it starts to bleed. Oh, I don't like it, Mum. And then by the <laughs> end... Mum's dead. Eh? Spoilers. And then by the end, it's... <laughs> Book one. It, some people might not have read it. Anyway. Episode 108. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, he just gets peed off with that. And, yeah. That's about it. Detention with Dolores. I'm a fifth year in Hogwarts. I'm in year 10. Yeah. Oh, and Ron becomes... Uh, the new Quidditch keeper for Gryffindor after doing some tryouts. You couldn't make it up, could you? Someone did. <laughs> Someone had a go. Let me tell you something. Yeah, what would you like to say? Let me tell you something. People are not believing that Harry Potter and Dumbledore and like their belief that Voldemort is back and he killed Cedric Diggory. They don't believe it, do they? They don't believe it. Some do, but some don't. When I was a child, I never understood why no one would believe why people would think he's a liar. Mm. You got Seamus Finnegan and going, thanks to you, my mom didn't let me, almost didn't let me come back to Hogwarts. And then Harry's like, well, if your mum's as stupid as you are, I hope you both burn in a ditch. Yeah. Which is a bit far, in my opinion. Yeah, I think? agree, a bit too much, that. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> He does say that, something to that effect, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, tomato, potato. She made a la 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 But let me tell you something. If I was at that high school as a student, you were not friends with Harry Potter, I think I would think he was lying as well. Because not only is he one of the rudest people at that school, yeah, everything's always about him. So you'd think, oh yes, totally. Why wouldn't he be lying? If you try yeah. and keep the attention on him... Um, he's lying about the Dark Lord and Cedric. how Cedric Diggory died. He killed Cedric Diggory because he was so desperate to win the Triwizard Tournament. He put his yeah. own name in the cup. Um, yeah, what are people thinking? If people think that he is lying about Voldemort killing Cedric, do they think Harry killed Cedric? How do they think Cedric died then? And did they announce, is it in the paper that Barty Crouch Jr. was lampooning as Mad-Eye Moody? Yeah. Dirty was that, boy. Was that announced? Are, are all the students aware of that now? I've no idea. It seems to be all very well, foggy. <laughs> also, say what you want about Barty Crouch Jr., he was the finest defence against the dark arts teacher we've ever had in our lives. He was fantastic. Practical lessons, on-hand experience, brilliant. And uh, Yeah, but I think I would think Harry Potter's a bullshit artist because he's so cocky about everything. Like, you know, like, oh, you must be the first first-year seeker in a century. All right, where have you come up with that? Mm. He's a bullshit artist. In right. a century. He tells tall tales. And it makes no sense that a first year would become the seeker because the thing is about humans. Yeah. Able-bodied humans. 
as they get older, their bodies become more developed and more capable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, people grow, don't so they? So, like, your finest athletes are at their peak. Footballers yeah. are 18, aren't they? Yeah. That's when their bodies are, I don't know, at their Peak most. fitness. Peak. Some footballers get older, don't they? He's got a poster of an old footballer in the family kitchen, don't you? Well, my mum and dad have a Sheffield Wednesday <laughs> calendar. And each month, it's bloody good value. Each month. It's bloody does, good value. Bloody good value. Each month does not only give you a picture of one player, but two players. It's fantastic. And you get to choose in your mind which one you prefer. You go downstairs and you just ogle at it. Honestly, I was stood, they went out for mm. to visit the family and I was stood in front of it for an hour like this. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Who do I prefer? Is it Reese James or is it Marvin Johnson? Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's fantastic. And what's also brilliant is one of them's in the away kit and one of them's in the home kit. You can even choose which kit you prefer. Oh, it's beautiful. It's fantastic, isn't it? Would you like to know what I made for lunch? Yes, I'd love to. So you had free reign of the kitchen. You could access any ingredients you wanted. What did you make? What do you think I touched? I think you had some bread. I had some bread. Let me tell you something. I did not have toast. Okay. Butter? Something spreadable. Something spreadable. Ooh. I don't know if it is butter, but it was in a butter container. Like margarine or something like something that. Sp- it might be spreadable butter. Did I you make know. a butter? Yeah. Ooh, cheese? No. Corned beef? No. Ham? No. Ooh. Uh, chicken? No. Just some random spread. Pate? No. Go on, what did you have? Crisps. <laughs> <laughs> a crisp butty with uh, butter. I put a packet of um, salt and vinegar squares in there. Oh, my God. You've done it right, at least. Lovely. And then, as a starter, I had a pack of mini cheddars. That's fantastic. So, for starters, crisps. And for main course, crisps and bread. And for pudding, crisps and ice cream. Snickers. Snickers, lovely. Oh, you did have a dessert as well. Stole the Snickers. You're not stealing, you're sharing. What size is yours in the Kirkby household? Shared a Snickers, but I did it in a way. It was an unopened pack of four. So I opened it in a way that I could reseal it. I slipped my little fingers into the Kirkby pack of Snickers. Yeah. Lovely. Right, took one away, resealed it. And I thought, if anything, I'm just gaslighting into thinking that this pack only came with three in it. Yeah. Oh, factory misshape. Mm. Yeah. Well, been... I'm glad. I'm glad you've helped yourself to the fridge because mm. um, you know you need your strength. You've not been well this week, and you know I want you to feel comfortable in my family home. They said to me as soon as I came in the door, "Make this house as if it is your own," and you know what? I have done. I, uh, I've i listed some of your dad's items on eBay, just like he would. Yeah, yeah, you um, have. I've already made an £80 profit. Fantastic, yeah. And uh, all going to you, I hope. I'll give you a bit. Ah, oh, thanks very much. We've been having a laugh on this tour. What can a little we, bit, yeah. What can we tell people that is suitable for all our listeners that we've been laughing at? Hmm. Mm, not much. <laughs> not much. Um, I don't know. We've we just come up with little phrases that we like to repeat over and over again, like "dirty doggy done a shitty." We've been doing roadrunner noises. We're going. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing that. We've been pulling a funny face like this. <laughs> So sometimes, if Tom's concentrating on driving, I'll just do that, and then I'll wait for him to look at me and mm. laugh. And sometimes I do it in the show now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so we, we, in fact, I, you know, you have a laugh in the moment, and then you forget. Mm. It's the problem of life and human memory. Oh, we went to we went to Swansea the other day. We went into a 
KFC. And the, someone behind the counter recognised us. No, recognise you. <laughs> so me to go up and be like, oh! And I was like, just ignore that. Yeah. And something happened that never happens in KFC. A guy came over and he goes, is everything okay with your meal? When has that ever happened at a KFC? <laughs> never. As if you're at a restaurant. Yeah. Is everything okay with your meal? Yeah. I said, yeah, it's fine, thank you. He goes, are you the man? I said, I'm the man. And they go, and they said, if the man requires anything, come and ask. Yeah. But his manager didn't like that. No. He went, I'm the man. He goes, no, he's the man on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, he gave us two free cookies. Some cookies. But it was funny because he went, oh, I didn't know you were from Swansea. <laughs> I was like, I'm not from fucking Swansea. <laughs> Right, Tom has been practising his South Wales accent, which actually sounds a bit more like somebody Italian, maybe. Oh, Swansea boy, are you? Oh, Swansea boy. I, oh, I always knew a Swansea boy. I could tell just from looking at you, just from the fact you joined Swansea. You're a Swansea boy, aren't you? Just like me. You want the cookie, do you? Then tell me you're from Swansea. That's right. Open wide. I'll feed you, just like Swansea. We've had a few hours out of that. Uh, on long journeys, it's got us from, uh, you know, at least 10 junctions mm. distance. Yeah, fantastic. I'm sure we'll remember more stuff. I'm tr- struggling to remember what we uh, what we were saying. Yep. Mm. All done soon, though. February, gone like that. A month, gone. Just like that. It's March Just like that now. performing. I've, got, I've done no work because I've been driving and just relaxing during the day. What a work. The only thing I've done is performed my heart out. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes not so much. In Southampton, I'm not saying anymore. <laughs> it was an all right gig. Uh, yeah. So they took a while to warm up. But let me tell you this Fred and George are doing clinical trials. It's important. <laughs> Yeah, it's important to remember that in the books, unlike the films, that these twins are short and stocky. Yes. Puts a completely different spin on it, doesn't it? Oh, it certainly does. If you're a first year and the person issuing your clinical trial is tall, slender, like the movie ones, mm. you got a bit more trust in them. But the fact that the short and stocky... Might look a bit more rough. Not rough, more sinister. Oh, like a Bond henchman. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean, like Kingpin or something. Yeah, well, they just shouldn't be doing it. And, you know, it's like, oh, they're testing out sweets on first years that make them faint. It's like, right, hang on, you boys are in the final year of school, you boys are 18, and you are giving 11-year-olds sweeties that make them faint. I know. I don't like that. Why not test them on your mates? Maybe it should be them two who's got the Gary Glitter suitcase. Yeah. Why don't you give Lee Jordan a nose-biting teacup or a fang frisbee? Or Why don't you give do? Ron a nipple-twisting legume? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why don't you give Hermione a bum-pinching walnut? Hey, you can't say <laughs> nipple-twisting <laughs> and then tut-tut me for saying <laughs> bum Pinching. <laughs> now, they are testing Hermione's patience. Oh, is, they are. Because Hermione, the voice of reason, says, lads, you shouldn't be doing this on first years, right? You're warping their experience. It's not right. Yeah. So you could hurt them. Something could go afoot. And mm. they're laughing in her face. Yeah. What are you going to do? Give us a detention. Disrespectful. I don't know if she can issue the, them detentions or not, but she says, No, but I will write to your mother. At this point, the boys drop to their knees and they start begging Hermione. Yeah. They say, Please don't. If you do that, our lives will be over. Yeah. Embarrassing. <sighs> and you mean 18 and scared of your mummy shouting at you? No, I, I wouldn't like that. My mum shouted at me. Well, I wouldn't like it, but you know. It's a bit of an idle threat. Well, whatever. Um, but the thing is, they're scared of getting a howler from Mrs. Weasley. Oh, your father 
always facing an inquiry at work, and it's all your fault. And the thing is, you have to respect Mrs. Weasley. You've got to. You've she... got to respect Mrs. Weasley. She's been a mother for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Homemaker. She's put all this work in. Yeah. Sure, her voice is shrill, but that what is what makes her lovable. Yeah. Who doesn't love someone screaming? Yeah. <sighs> Fantastic. Well, yeah, for 20 years, you know, she's homeschooled the children, and that's no easy task. Oh, yeah. I think she's fantastic. Props to her. And, you know, now that all the kids are at school or working, she deserves a rest. Retirement. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Good on you, Mrs. Weasley. And also, not only that, she's largely retiring. She's the backbone of the Order of the Phoenix. Bloody Sorry. hell. Sorry. She's keeping things ship shape. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Weasley. I'm on my hands and knees, bowing down to you, kissing your toes. Lovely. Give her an MBE. <laughs> Give her an MBE for services to magic. My first impressions of uh, Professor Umbridge. She seems lovely. Harry Potter walks in. Good evening, Mr. Potter. Lovely, what a way to start a detention. Very nice, yeah. Harry says, can I do my detention another time? She goes, no, you do your detention when you have a detention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I think like up until now she hasn't actually been that bad. Mm. But it's about to get worse. Um, yeah, they, so they do loads of lessons. And I feel like... Care of magical creatures is the biggest dos of a lesson. Tell me more. Ever. Transfiguration, it's like, right, you've got to practice all these uh, summoning charms. You've got to write me a three-page essay in potions. You've got to write me a two-page essay in uh, uh, history of magic. You've got to write me a dream diary for transfiguration. Care of magical creatures. Draw a picture of this bow truckle and label it. And I can't believe they've not finished it in the in the same lesson. They're all taking it home for homework. What do you make to that? Hmm. I'd like that lesson. I'd love that lesson. I feel like it's nice to have a little easy lesson like that. You can take the piss out of it, but I think that is the kind of lesson for the mind that learns by doing. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Drawing I'm not knocking something. it. I'm saying it's no, lovely. No, you hate it. You think I it's I do dust. not. Um, you don't like learning about animals. Le the only, you only like learning about animals when it's killing them. What are you saying? <laughs> what do you mean? What are you on about? I love animals. <laughs> oh, yeah, you loved them at KFC last night when you're eating one. Hey. Well, yeah. Maybe there's some self reflection I need to do about that. Mm. Mm. Um. <laughs> what am I on about? <laughs> Yeah, you don't know about me being fascinated with killing animals. <laughs> you've always... Right? If you've never seen Lucas's back garden, there is a whole series where he tortured little animals in his back garden and buried them. And what did they say about little boys who hey. kill animals when they're younger? They grow up to be weird men. It's all <laughs> lies. I don't know what you're on about. Right. So... <laughs> They're having dinner, right, in the Great Hall. Tell me more. Right. <clears throat> and at one point it says that Harry is tipping lamb chops onto his plate. <coughs> tipping? How many lamb chops do you need to pour onto a plate for the word tipping to be used? Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I envy him. Yeah. Any time I've had lamb chops in my life, I've never been satiated. You've never had enough? I've never had enough. Yeah. I've always found, like, no matter how much I gnaw on the bone to get every last bit of meat off, yeah. I've never had enough. Well, I bet you wish you could have tipped a few more on on those occasions. Well, you get what you're given. Growing up, money can be tight. So even the fact I had lamb chops growing up means... Occasionally, things were all right. Yeah, bloody hell. They cost a lot more than normal chops, don't they? 
Oof, lamb, it's expensive. Mm. Even Welsh lamb being in Wales. And me and him were both fans of mint sauce. Ooh. A lot of people, they don't like mint sauce, do they? No, they hate it, like, oh, a lot. <laughs> but we like mint sauce. Mm. We'll put it on a roast. We'll put it on lamb. Hell. Just put it where it ends. Yeah. But I'm like, well, I'll have, well, I'm a bit of a maverick. I'll have mint sauce on any roast meat. I'll so will I. Like vinegar. I'll do anything he does. Mm. He, sa- he jumps off a cliff. I jump right off behind him. Yeah. Not happened yet, but that could happen, couldn't it? He goes on stage during a pot vision gig, tells some jokes. I wait four minutes. I tell some after him. He gets in the car. I get in the car. Very similar people. Mm. Yeah. Now, during this detention, how do you feel about this? Because it, this, for me, is the most disturbing thing that's happened so far in these books. The thing is... Uh, punishments are outdated. For those of you who are not aware, Miss Professor Umbridge has an enchanted quill. And this quill does not do your homework for you. We're not at school where we go, oh, I wish I had a magic pen that did all my work for me. That's not what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. This is an enchanted quill. Whatever Harry writes on a bit of parchment, mm. will appear etched into his hand. Right? Oh, and it hurts, doesn't it? And it hurts him. And so he has to write line after line after line after line, and each time he writes, it becomes etched deeper into his hand. Sometimes it heals, but it gets to a point where it stops healing, and mm. it just keeps etch. I must not tell lies. I must not tell lies. I must not tell lies. Right. The thing is, it's an outdated form of punishment, isn't it? But I respect oh, yeah. her right to wish it to him. She is a professional. What? What do you mean? You respect her right to do that. She's a professional. You know how hard it is, right, to get to a point where you're a Hogwarts tutor. They don't just let anyone do it. They do, Hagrid. <laughs> they do let anyone do it. How do you mean? What's this? <laughs> Anyone who wants to have a go <laughs> can have a go. Because as far as we're aware, she's not qualified as a teacher either. The she's thing a is, government official. Professor Umbridge is a member of Parliament. Yeah. And she has gracefully put this position on hold to take up the much-needed role of Professor of Defence Against the Dark Arts, right? Yes. That position is cursed. There's a new teacher every year, and she said, you know what, I'll throw me hat in the ring. I'll put my professional career on hold, where I'm moving my way up the ladder. She was on track to becoming... um, Minister of Magic. Minister of Magic. Minister of Magic. But now she said, right, my school needs me. Yeah. I'm going to jump in and do my bit, right? So I respect her, and I respect everything she does. I disagree. I think uh, hurting children is despicable, and uh, she shouldn't be doing it. Misogynist. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, yeah. We, we agree to disagree on that, on that one. <laughs> Harry is off his rocker. Because later on, he's like, oh, well... I finally found someone who's nearly as bad as Snape. Right. Snape has never physically abused you. Doesn't he say he found someone he hated more than Snape? No, he doesn't. He says he's not quite as bad as Snape. He did. Uh, Found someone he hates more. That's what my one said. Well, my one didn't say that. Mm. Maybe I'm mishearing it. Maybe you're mishearing it. Maybe. Did you listen to the audiobook? Yeah. What listening with? I was. Stephen Fry was doing it. Playing Candy Crush Saga, weren't you? No. You're very confrontational in today's episode. <laughs> Do you think so? I was because like, you're tired. I was like, this is the most playful I've ever been on a podcast episode. Playful's bullying? <laughs> That's not playful. Being mean? <laughs> you're having fun, maybe. You don't know how Tiger Cubs play, do you? Yeah, but we're, we're <laughs> men. 
just normal men. I hate that clip. Yeah, well, that's because other people like it. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, it is Harry Potter's choice to engage in this punishment, is it not? Yeah, well, he's agreeing not to say anything to anybody about it, if, which is ridiculous. If I was in year 10 and I rocked up for a detention, which I wouldn't because the thing is about me, I was a good boy at school. I never received one detention, not one. I didn't get one detention, right? Fantastic. I was that good. Yeah. And so if I rocked up into a detention and teacher threw a knife at me and went self-harm, I'd say... No. Yeah. I would stand up and I would go home. Yeah. He's got this weird warped view where he's like, well, if I give in, then she's winning, isn't she? She's winning now. She's, <laughs> she's hurting you every day. Hmm. How is that not winning? He's got this weird, like... God. Oh, Voldemort. I don't know what Voldemort's hatched all these plans over the year. All he has to do is rock up, throw Harry a gun, kill yourself. Oh, all right. <laughs> Bet you can't. Well, I'll show you. Yeah. Mm. He's got a strange... Well, I think this book in particular is very warped in his mind. He's got some inner demons that he's wrestling with. Mm. Um, Yeah. So maybe that's part of it as well. The thing is, what you have to take into consideration is that in the first book, not only has he had a mental child with Harry Potter, but at the end of the first book, um, Professor Quirrell's face dissolves in his hands. In the second book, he's chased by a basilisk and kills a man. Mm. In the third book, um, his mind comes crushing down because of a man he learns about not four months ago. Turns out to be a good guy. Mm. In the fourth book, uh, he competes in life-threatening tournaments. Right? That would make Jack not a dull boy. Definitely. It'd make Jack a very weird boy mm, I agree yeah it's got to, it's got to affect you mentally hasn't it mm. and, you know especially when he might even be like connected to the Dark Lord mentally yeah thinking his thoughts hearing his trumps because we all know about Harry Potter he is a whore crux oh <laughs> what it was rude and a spoiler <laughs> double whammy Double whammy. Mm. Um, well, I think this is one of the first chapters after five books where I actually felt a little bit of uh, nice feelings towards Ron. Mm. Uh, he was he was a bit embarrassed about admitting that he was trying for the Quidditch keeper. Maybe because he thought he couldn't do it, uh, wouldn't get accepted onto the team. But he's been out every day in the rain practicing. And, uh, Let me tell you something. Yeah. When your friend is already successful at something, it's quite weird. Mm. Not weird. It's hard to want to get involved with it yourself. It's daunting, isn't it? Because he's already done it all very successfully. Yeah. So how he did it straight away, runs out of childhood of Quidditch. And yeah. He's not been able to achieve it till fifth year. Harry yeah. Potter played Quidditch not once. Prodigy. Yeah. It's like if I was like, All right, I want to learn German now. You'd go, all right, young apprentice. Yeah. I will teach you. Yeah. I will set aside an hour of my time every night and yeah. I'll teach you German, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing is as well, like not wanting to fail. Uh, I think this is a, a human thing. Where people think, well, if I don't try, I've not failed. And they're scared of trying. Mm. But failure is just learning. And also... Fight, flight, freeze. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, fight. people say fight or flight, don't they? But sometimes people freeze. You forget they, about freeze. They don't do anything at all. Because you uh, you get into panic mode and don't know what... Like a rabbit in the headlights type situation. Mm. Yeah, and people... Uh, they just don't try things because they're scared of failure. But really, you know, failure's good because you learn something. Or, well, even, you know, if you're not good at something, you find out quickly and then try something else. Absolutely. Rather than continuing to dream and wonder, could I ever have been a top badminton professional? You. Have a go and you'll find out. 
No, no. I, well, the problem was when I played badminton in a very relaxed group club, mm. there was someone who was a lot better than me uh, who was trying to do competitions and stuff and finding it very difficult. So I was like, well, no. Well, I don't really, I didn't really have an interest in doing it, but in my mind I was like, well, yeah, I think I've reached my limit. This is the level of badminton I can achieve. Mm. And I'm happy with that. You're more of a sportsman than me. Yeah, you've never really got into a sport, have you? You do some fitness things. Uh, yeah. I do hit workouts sometimes. Yeah. I'm going to start going to the gym on Monday. Um, but, no, I don't uh, do sports. Um, no. Never been asked to. God, I'd love to, but... Well, if you ever want a game of badminton or tennis or darts or snooker, I'm always in Germany. Right, you can always come to Germany and have a game. Come over. Come over. You got a spare bedroom? Uh, we've got somewhere where we can put a mattress up. Yeah, if you ever want to visit, you're more than welcome. Mm. And Lucy as well. Mm. But no other family members. What about Craig Snow? Can I bring him? Yeah, yeah, he can come. <laughs> of course he can. Uh, yeah, we saw we saw Sir Snowy in Brighton. We saw a few uh, we saw a few other patrons, didn't we? I don't know if they like to be named, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if Craig Snow likes to be named. Maybe not. Let us know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was lovely to lovely to see him and lovely to see others. I think that's been the joy of this tour. Last oh. year, last year we had a few fans turn up, but this year we've had loads of podcast listeners and patrons and. It's been a genuine delight. It's been really lovely. Yeah, I do love it. You get most of it because you're out selling merch. Yeah, um, and you're not allowed to come out, are you? Well, it puts me off performing. Mm. It really puts me off performing. People seeing me before. Yeah. Fair because enough. I zone in on people and then I think, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to perform now. I've seen that person. Yeah, yeah. And fair it, enough. And it's not someone I'd know. It'd be a stranger who's like, might have a miserable face. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You all right, baby? Yeah, I did a little, uh, a little gurgle. <laughs> is it a gurgle? Or just a hiccup? I don't know. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Ron is the new keeper of the Gryffindor Quidditch team. He's flying. He's flying. <laughs> I think that's my favourite part of the new bits in the Pottervision show. I get to fly. I get to stand on a chair with a broom, with a black cloth hanging from it, and I simulate myself flying about. I'm trying to see yourself doing it. You've got a video? Oh. Yeah. What the bloody hell was that? Here we go. Hey, this is in Hollyhead as well. Oh, you can see me boxer shorts. I'm flying. I'm flying. Hey, you got a round of applause. Easy boy, you're going to wear A little joke about uh, making love. That's fantastic. Uh, and the best angle, I think, is what you did side on. You can't really see it properly. What the... <laughs> It's a Mario character. Uh, yeah, so Ron's the new keeper. Congratulations to Ron. Um, but it's funny because Angelina Johnson, the new captain, which we've not mentioned because Oliver Wood is an adult man now. He's playing for the, I don't know, whoever, a proper team. Uh, Angelina Johnson's been promoted to the new <laughs> captain and she's saying, well, he wasn't the best, but... You know, he's got more time to do it and he's not annoying, so... We've mm. accepted him. And I think that's true of life. I think if I was an employer, I would rather employ the person who's easier to get on with than the person who's more efficient. That is true in many fields. Yeah, 100%. I think it's the same in comedy as well. I think promoters don't necessarily book... The funniest comedians. Clearly not. My diary's empty. Exactly. Uh, they tend to book the people who are like they're friends with or people who they get on with better. Same as us. Same as us. Well, yeah, cause sometimes you do a gig and it's like, oh, there's room for someone else if you want a car share. 
And obviously, you, you don't want to be spending three hours on the motorway with someone who's annoying or uh, not nice or smelly. Not nice, is it? So you pick your mates or people you like. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think, you know, even though Ron might not be the best keeper, he might have butterfingers, he might have a wandering brain, <laughs> but he's a good egg, all told. Right. How many new seekers of the Quidditch... T- how many new keepers of the Quidditch team are you going to give this chapter out of five? It was dark, this chapter. Uh, the torturing of Harry Potter's hand will be forever ingrained into my brain, much like the message I will not tell lies is ingrained on his brain, mm-hmm. on his hand. Um, but I like a bit of darkness. I like that Umbridge is an even old bat. And uh, I can't wait to see how her you know, rise to power in Hogwarts continues. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it, Ron. I felt a bit of like good feeling about Ron, bit of sympathy for him, feeling embarrassed about applying to be a Quidditch professional. Mm. Um, and Fred and George are up to their usual tricks. We've not even mentioned Hermione hiding little hats around the Gryffindor common room, hoping to free some elves who <laughs> accidentally pick them up. Uh, that was strange. It was good. I'm going to give it four... Uh, new keepers of the Gryffindor Quidditch team out of five. Right. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Do you like this chapter? Yeah. Thank you. Me? I agree. This chapter was a mental minefield. Everyone had something going on. Hermione has a new responsibilities as... What the fuck's it called? Prefect. Prefect. (laughs) <laughs> right. Yeah, she's got a new responsibility as a prefect. She's got her like now dressed down two boys who are older than her successfully. Mm. Right, Fred and George are acting up and doing things they know they should not. Clinical trials at school inappropriate. Ron is challenged with overcoming the odds, becoming the seeker, becoming the keeper of Gryffindor. Quidditch team. Hard things to compete with when Harry's done so much in so little time with so little training. But he manages it. Harry is being uh, constantly bombarded with disbelief of things that have happened to him. Traumatic things that have happened to him. To be gaslit and told you're a liar about such things by so many people would drive a boy insane. So when presented with a punishment that he must self-harm for no reason well for the exact same reason of telling that you must self-harm for telling the truth to try and admit she's trying to crush his spirit wow what a lot he had to overcome for that reason i can give this chapter no less than five new keepers of the quidditch team out of five fantastic right are you ready for this week's edition of quiz yes Quiz, 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 quiz. Question one of today's quiz. Oops. Wee 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 wee. Oh. How did Hermione's hair crackle? How did Hermione's hair crackle? She was dressing down Fred and George. It crackled lividly. Like electricity. Oh. Question two. What do bow truckles eat? They eat, uh, I don't know, seeds? Fairy eggs. Oh. Question three. What kind of chip chops does Harry eat? Lamb chops. Very good. Question four. What happened to Umbridge's bulging eyes when Harry asked for a favour? Mm, they asked for a favour. They bulged even more. They narrowed. Oh. Unfortunately, you've lost the quiz. 
Now are you ready for the nation's second favourite segment? Hedwig's droppings. We're not alluding to owl poo. We're not alluding to ploppings. We mean the messages you send in when we allude to Hedwig's droppings. What's in a beak this week? Well, we've had a few uh, messages uh, from people. We've had a couple of five-star reviews. The first one is from Dobbs012. And Dobbs says, Seen these guys twice now and their live show is just as well done as their podcast. You can tell how strong their bromance is with each other. Do you like that? No, I don't like... Yes, I do love it. It's a fantastic compliment. Thank you. To say that the podcast is good, but and also the live show is good. Although, I've always never liked the term bromance. Yeah. Bromance. Which means friends, doesn't it? Well, it's part of the word romance. Mm. So it's like some implication. That we love each other. No, that we're oh. sexually involved with each other. That doesn't happen. Now, uh, she finishes off, lovely guys, and a great listen for any Potter enthusiast. Now, we've also had a five-star review from Emma Rush. And Emma says, each episode has me in hysterics. You guys do such a fab job, and I definitely recommend this podcast to anyone that has read the Harry Potter books. I've just started listening to book three and can't wait for the rest. Hopefully get to see you both on tour at some point this year. Well, hopefully you've already been, Emma, because we're nearly finished. <sighs> Thank you for helping me get through work every day. Um, right, good. That message, I think, is from the same person who's done that review. Did she ask a question? No. We've had another message from Paul Whitelaw. It was an email. He says, I went to see you at the show in Glasgow. It was so funny, my cheeks are sore from laughing. Which set? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I like that. I like that, everybody. It was weird seeing the two of you in the flesh as I have been only listening to the podcast. Loved how you dealt with the two guys at the front that just got up and left at the start of the show. Do you remember them? Mm. We handed out their crisps to the audience that mm. they left. Would highly recommend catching the show if it comes near you. Lovely. Uh, we had another message. Uh, sorry, thank you very much, Paul. We've had another message from a different Emma who says, I came to see you in Liverpool a couple of weeks ago and have since binge listened to the podcast. I don't know if you still do Hedwig's droppings, but if you do, I have an urgent question. Do you think Voldemort is a virgin? He doesn't seem the type to have a girlfriend, but he's also in his 60s by the final book. Love the live show and the podcast. I hope when you finish book seven, you just start again on a never-ending loop. It's very clear that person is not seen or read or listened to The Cursed Child. Because we all know in The Cursed Child, Harry Potter and Voldemort have sex. No. <laughs> they do. No, they, they don't. Do. In The Cursed Child? Yeah. No, I, no. <laughs> I don't believe it. Not but, with each other. Oh. That makes more sense. But in the same room. Oh. <laughs> they go to Amsterdam together. Don't they? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Lovely. And uh, so everyone's looking at them through the shutters. Mm. Um, so, Voldemort has a kiddie. Is he in Cursed Child? I don't know. I don't know anything about that wretched play. Right. No play should have a separate part two that you have to buy tickets for. You see it all in one day. It's one ticket. Oh. I rest my case. Uh, no, I don't. I uh, do something else that means Ca I accept the new information. Case closed. I, I, the case closed. Uh, so there you go. So Voldemort has had a bit of rumpy pumpy. And I'm imagining more than once. Because it's very unlikely that he got bingo on the first try making a kid. Could happen though, couldn't it? The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, I don't Rumpy know. Pumpy Bingo. Who taught? What was your sex education class? <laughs> I learned it from um, Mr. Tumble. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Rumpy Pumpy <laughs> and Bingo. <laughs> There's a baby. 
<laughs> right, we've got a load of new babies. Right, why? Right, how's this happening? Because the number stays the same, yet every week we've got seven new patrons. <laughs> How is this happening? Well, it's gone up a little bit recently. We're up to about 70-something patrons now. In August, we had 60 patrons. Yeah. And now we're on 70. Yeah. I have done at least 30 new babies since August. What the fuck is happening? Well, to be fair, we were behind by a load. Uh, but you know, people come and go, don't they? They come, they sample the wares, they go, they come back later. We've had a few people coming back. They better not be getting new kisses. No, no, I will never do that to you. No, actually, you can have a new kisses. You come back, you get more kisses. There you go. Good. Uh, actually, when you come back, you come back as an adult. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Well, it's your job to cut that out. Your job to cut that out. <laughs> so, how many babies would you like to kiss on the forehead today? Good Lord. How many have we got? Oh. Nine. What time do we have to be at the gig? Five. So we need to leave here about 20 past four. Right, so it's 12 minutes past four at the minute. <laughs> Two? <laughs> should we do, I don't know, should we do half of them? Why don't, so what time do you want to set off, look? We, we sit, yeah, we're in the middle of recording the podcast. What does he want? What? Oh. This is not going to be urgent. <laughs> It's an emergency. Was it urgent? No. <laughs> right, that's one less baby we can do now. Right, what do you want? Okay, um, let's just get started on them. Give me one. The first, I will not. We don't have time. <laughs> uh, right, the first <laughs> baby. You can get it up. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> the first baby's a baby Harry, and it's Molly Cole. Molly Cole. You are coal miner's baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Unfortunately, coal miner daddy has got in the bath first. He has made the bath water filthy. Then mummy's got in for her bath. Um, she's bathing in filthy bath water. She's making herself dirty, if anything. The only one coming out of this well is daddy. Mm. Um, eventually, they put baby in the bath water. Forget that bit. Forget about the baby. You, the baby. You get submerged in the water and they think, time to throw the bath water out. They open up the window and throw you, baby, along with the bath water, out of the window. Right? Can you believe that? You are flying towards a conservatory roof. I am cleaning a pool. It's a new job I've got. Yeah. Well, I see one. you flying towards <laughs> the... What do you say? You need one. <laughs> I see baby flying towards a roof. I use my pressure washer <laughs> to shoot up something at you. Hits yeah. your nappy and it propelled higher. Yeah. Yeah? Now you are flying towards dog shit. I shoot you again. Yeah. Right? Propelled higher. Now you are flying towards a skip. I think, gotta stop this now. I start sprinting towards you. Jump into the air, grab dirty baby. You stink. I'm reluctant to do this because you are covered in bath water that is rank. But alas, it's my duty. Lovely. Thank you, Molly. I thought that was a really good one. That was a fantastic one. Well done. Now we've got a baby Hermione, and it's Christy Smith. Christy Smith. You are the daughter of a blacksmith. The, bl <laughs> the blacksmith goes home for his daily bath. 
He is filthy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, he's working at his shop. Ding. 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 Service, please, someone says. <laughs> <laughs> They're ringing a bell. Lovely. You thought he was banging metal, didn't you? Yeah. He is banging metal. But someone needs service. So he walks out to like serve someone. Excuse me, I bought these horseshoes earlier and my horse doesn't like them. Oh, nerd. <laughs> Who's this nerd? Excuse yeah. me. Oh, God. I need to return them. Oh, you baby are cold. Oh. Yeah. And you decide to wander into the blacksmith's oven. Right. You go in there and it's so cosy and hot and you fall asleep. Mm. Your hair burns off. You're in such a deep sleep. Yeah. I smell the burnt hair. Mm. Oof. <laughs> Walk into the oven. Pull you out by your foot. Too hot. <laughs> Dip you in water. <laughs> Lovely. I think with the time, should we just do one more? Sure. And finally, we've got a baby run. It's Day Bizzle. Day Bizzle, you are a, your dad is a used car dealer. Um, I have come to the showroom <laughs> to purchase a car, BMW 3 Series. Oh. It's an old one, though. I turn it on, and the engine does not sound right. Your dad goes, uh, £100 off. I go, well, I might as well have another broken car. Go on then. Give him his money. Drive off down the road. In the boot, I can hear a commotion. <laughs> I think, what is that? So I start going over some speed bumps to try and get rid of it. Boom, 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 boom. It gets worse. Let's, let's, let's. Pull over. Open the boot. It's you. Who would have thought it? Dave Bizzle. Pick you up and <laughs> put you in a post box with your dad's address on it. You'll get back eventually. Lovely. Thank you very much. Day. And that was Hedwig's Droppings. This has been the Pottervision Podcast. Thank you so, so much for listening. The tour is finished now. You can't come anymore. But uh, we are in the middle of finalising details for our new Edinburgh Fringe run. So we're hoping to be back in the Edinburgh Fringe in August. <coughs> so we should have an announcement on that soon. Uh, and also we've got a gig in Derby, at the, I believe on the 2nd of August. We're going to do a warm-up gig for the Fringe um, at Annie's Burger Shack, which is a fun venue. Uh, so ticket links will be shortly on the website for that. Yeah. yeah. Next week... We will be on episode 109, which is chapter 14 of The Order of the Phoenix, Percy and Padfoot. As always, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Pottervision. We've got some exciting stuff. Uh, recently, we've watched Bean, the movie. We've watched Doctor No. And next week, we're watching Rat Burger. Hey. If you want to know what we're on about, uh, get Now TV or a Now TV subscription, like a free trial, and you can watch David Williams' Rat Burger. The, um, it's, it's a book, but it's been made into a film or something. Or maybe you can watch it on YouTube, but it's only short, I think. Bloody funny. Bloody funny, though. It's in Rat Burger. You're the only one who hasn't. So check it out. Anyway, you have been a touring Tom Lawrenson. And you have been a bathing Lucas Kirkby. Bye-bye. <laughs>